welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today we'll discuss about some of the common infections chest infections in emergency room and how to select antimicrobials antimicrobials can be antibiotics or anti virals we are not discussing about anti fungals now because in emergency room we get most of the time very sick patient acutely presenting to emergency room uh, viral infections or bacterial infections are very very common here fungal infections can come but uh, at this moment we will not be able to discuss that type of cases so there are few clinical scenarios we will discuss now see one of the x ray of one patient who is a 30 year old male no past illness that means no previous history of any chest illness few days history of cough breathlessness chills so normally when he come to emergency room this type of patients come to emergency room we take an x ray we ask for wbc count english wbc count always indicates some sort of uh, bacterial infection if it is a viral infection mostly counts are normal or it is reduced procalcitonin is a test which increases during bacterial infection that is eight that means a, a very mild type of infection bacterial infection it is localized infection patient is not having sepsis it's a pneumonia mostly a bacterial pneumonia counts are very high what will be the antibiotic of choice so here few things we should understand there is no past history of any lung disease <clears throat> that means a normal lung who is getting a community acquired solid pneumonia that is that means it is not uh, bilateral it is mostly a gram positive infection so that is the clue we are getting from this type of x rays there is there is pneumonia here you can see this is pneumonia white homogeneous opacity on the left right lower zone he never had any past history of any chest illness he is having community acquired community acquired pneumonia it is mostly gram positive mostly gram negative can be there but it is mostly gram positive so we need to cover this patient with some gram positive antibiotics so what are the antibiotics we commonly use you can give amoxicillin <coughs> 500 mg eid you can give augmentin amoxicillin with clavulanic acid again 625 tid so these two drugs predominantly covers gram positive that means streptococcal will be covered so if you go want to go a little higher antibiotic you can go for bifloxacin 500 mg od once daily into 5 to 7 days this covers both gram positive and gram negative most of the standard textbooks always give a uh, option of higher quinolones like levofloxacin or moxifloxacin for lung, lung infection because if you see the coverage of this respiratory quinolone they cover gram positive they cover gram negative they cover anaerobes they cover atypicals so almost all types of coverage is there for levofloxacin or moxifloxacin so a patient who is having no previous history of lung infection a pneumonia means mostly predominantly gram positive infection streptococcus pneumonia you can go for amoxicillin augmentin all these things but always a better cover will be levofloxacin if you see doxycycline that is a cheaper option doxycycline also equally effective option 100 mg od first day we can give 200 mg then onwards 100 mg od will be there enough it has got similar coverage of levofloxacin it covers gram positive some amount of gram negative atypical anaerobes everything will be covered so if the patient is getting admitted patient is little bit sick and if you want to admit same injection can be given, amoxicillin can be given, augmentin can be given. If the patient is very poor, you can give crystalline pencil, 
that has got similar coverage of amoxicillin with tavaquinone or levofloxacin injection can be given moxifloxacin can be given doxycycline can be given so all these things are the option here for this patient but if the patient come to opd we may give levofloxacin that will be the best option but only thing <coughs> when we are discussing with option in our country india we know that the prevalence of tuberculosis is very high in india so we try to avoid quinolones they are second line anti tubercular drugs in tuberculosis so unless and until there is a reason for levofloxacin we try to avoid levofloxacin that that doesn't mean that we should not give it we are not suspecting tuberculosis you can give but even if there is a small suspicion about tuberculosis better to avoid this type of drugs you can go for alternative drugs whatever it is standard textbooks always says that the best option of community acquired pneumonia is levofloxacin or moxifloxacin they are respiratory quinones they cover almost all types of bacteria in a normal <coughs> so another case 50 year old male diabetic alcoholic few days history of cough breathlessness chills again wbc count is very high and procalcitonin is significantly high that means patient is developing a system systemic uh, in, in, inflammation mostly patient is going for sepsis what is the antibiotic of choice so here you remember few things an old age not very old but diabetic immunocompromised alcoholic so diabetic alcoholic upper lobe consolidation means there is a strong suspicion for klebsiella klebsiella is one of the most common cause for upper lobe pneumonia especially in diabetic alcoholic patient his counts are very high his procalcitonin is very high that means he is sick suppose he is not sick he can be discharged from your opd klebsiella even if we give levofloxacin it is okay for moxifloxacin okay but remember his procalcitonin is very high that means bacterial load may be very high and suppose you want to admit this patient we have to cover this klebsiella the problem with diabetic patient alcoholic patient most of the time this klebsiella <coughs> which is which is which has got a uh, <coughs> we just got a uh, predilection towards upper lobe maybe multi drug resistant klebsiella when multi drug resistant klebsiella levofloxacin alone may not be sufficient that but however we need to have a culture to tell that but here we can go for a little higher antibiotic piperacillin tazobactam may be a good choice you can give 4.2 g tid can be said ticarcillin clavulanic acid also has got similar effect why we are giving, going for piperacillin tazobactam because this bacteria especially klebsiella may be multi drug resistant organism that's why we are selecting this antibiotic but many a times even if you start levofloxacin and moxifloxacin patient responds to your treatment that is because sometimes this also may be a community acquired infection upper load upper lobe upper zone or upper lobe predilection is always for klebsiella but sometimes <coughs> this type of lesions can be due to gram positive cocci also now upper lobe pneumonia versus tuberculosis that is a problem here you can see the horizontal fissure so what is the problem with this infection so this infection here because of the edema horizontal fissure is sagging down because of edema the horizontal fissure is sagging now whereas here there is a long loss of lung volume the horizontal fissure is towards up okay so that indicates a chronic process so in mostly in tuberculosis this is the horizontal fissure you can see here 
mostly in tuberculosis there will be collapse consolidation whereas in <coughs> Pepsiella there will be consolidation with edema. <coughs> so sagging down of the interlobar fissure is very important here. Now another case 50 year old male diabetic alcoholic two days history of cough restlessness WBC count is normal procalcitonin is normal his covid is negative what is the antibiotic of choice that is sufficient if you look at here there are bilateral large amount of infiltration bilateral <coughs> this is called as bronchopneumonia this mostly indicates a viral infection so it's a viral infection which is the common virus normally in our country now covid is the most important <coughs> if not covid it is h1 n1 what is the treatment you treat with oseltamivir 75 mg bd into 5 to 7 days okay that is a treatment Now another case, 50 year old male, diabetic, few days on mechanical ventilator. So this patient developed pneumonia after he is on mechanical ventilation. So it is a hospital acquired pneumonia. His counts are very high, procalcitonin is very high. That means it is a bacterial infection, it is not a fungus or virus. And he has developed so hospital acquired especially ventilator associated pneumonia so ventilator associated pneumonia means you have to cover with both gram positive gram negative and some important bacteria are mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and pseudomonas so the two important organisms which can be there in ventilator associated so here we cover with vancomycin so this is an empirical therapy chart we have to cover mrsa vancomycin that also covers most of the gram positive organs or you can go for linus monitor here in gram negative area we again take the present tazobacter or septazidine or cefepime or directly go for meropenem so these are the good choices Either we present Dysobacterium with uh, Vangomycin or Meropenem with Vangomycin. Don't think that Meropenem or the present Dysobacterium covers MRSA. They don't cover. Or other or, uh, other drugs like uh, Levofloxin. That is also a very good choice to cover all, all these things. But it, that also doesn't cover MRSA. So 65 year old male Parkinsonism patient, most of the Parkinsonism patient can have aspiration, came with sudden onset of breathlessness, what is the antibiotic of choice? You can see here some infiltrations are there, mostly they are aspirated, oral anaerobes are the most common cause. So here what you will think, what is the antibiotic of choice? You can give crystalline penicillin that covers oral and drugs, doxycycline can be given, amoxicillin can be given, augmentin can be given, levofloxin can be given, <coughs> all these things can be given. But one of the drug that is clintamycin, clintamycin is the best choice for this aspiration pneumonia. If you are giving preventive treatment, all these things will work. But in a severely sick patient, always add clindamycin to counter this aspiration pneumonia. So if you want to prevent aspiration pneumonia, you can simply start the patient on crystalline penicillin, doxycycline, amoxicillin, augmentin, levofloxacin. Some extent it can even control the infection. But in a patient who is having severely sick, 
because of this aspiration pneumonia, always add clindamycin. Okay, so that is very important. All the anaerobes above the diaphragm, clindamycin is the best choice. All the all the anaerobic infection below the diaphragm, metronidazole is a good choice. Now, 50 year old male, female came with one week history of mild fever. That is very important. In a typical pneumonia patient, they have high degree fever, chills, rigors, all these things. Here, mild fever, hyponatremia, loose stools, and chest shows some infiltrates bilaterally. So, it looks like viral pneumonia, but the problem is this is a, a typical type of pneumonia. Some of the important features which tell you that it's a typical pneumonia is patient can have hyponatremia, patient can have uh, hemolysis, patient can have elevated bilirubin because of hemolysis, altered mental status, all these things tells you that this is a typical pneumonia. Typical pneumonia can be bilateral and patient may not have typical pneumonia symptoms. <coughs> so, they are Legionella, Mycoplasma, Chlamydia, all this. So, which antibiotic is going to cover all these things? So, you can start Levofloxin or Moxifloxin. So, we already told that it can cover uh, gram positive, okay, gram negative, atypical anaerobes. So, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin is a good choice. <coughs> now, go for doxycycline. Yes, it covers amoxicillin, lesser coverage, augmentin, lesser coverage. Then, another important drug is azithromycin. Azithromycin dose is 500 milligram once daily for 3 to 5 days. When you start for 3 days, it will work for another 5 days. So, total it may work for 8 days. This is called as post antibiotic effect. So, acithromycin also can be given there. Now, this chart will tell you that which all conditions, whatever we have discussed are given in detail this chart. But one, two important drugs you should remember. In most of the conditions, you can either go for levofloxacin or moxifloxacin. So, what is the coverage of these drugs? They cover gram positive, they cover gram negative, they cover atypical, they cover anaerobes. These are the organisms which produces infection in the lungs. Almost all types of infections are produced by these are the type of organisms. And these two drugs can cover almost all types of infection in your lung area. That is why most of the standard textbooks give uh, these are the first line therapy options for most of the lung infections. Another important drug you should remember is Piprasidin Dacibactam. That is also can be given in this type of infection. Now, different bacteria require different type of uh, antibiotics in that you should remember other than what we discussed MRSA should be covered with a different type of drug that is vancomycin. Now, pseudomonas also we have discussed pseudomonas uh, you have to go for either septacidin or piprasidin dasabactam that is a different category of bacteria <laughs> that also we have discussed 4.5 gram TID. Now, this is a, a HIV patient's x-ray. Patient comes suddenly with severe breathlessness. So, most of the time this is due to PCP pneumonia, pneumocystis gerevasi pneumonia that is the name given for this. PCP is the old name, pneumocystis carinii pneumonia. They should be treated with trimethoprim and alpha methoxazol. So, they are combination like Bactrim DS. We have Bactrim DS, Septrim DS, all these things. So, Bactrim DS, two tablets TID. You can go for injection also, but uh, commonly available preparation is Bactrim DS tablet or Septrim DS. Alternatively, you can go for Vindamycin also. So, all patients who is having ECP pneumonia, in spite of uh, their low immunity, we can start prednisolone. 
So that can be started here. So pleural effusion in chest x-ray that looks like pneumonia or consolidation, whole area is white in color when the patient is lying down. And here also you can see pleural effusion. So that also mimics pneumonia. Some of the time uh, pneumonia will be associated with pleural effusion that is called a syn pneumonic effusion. Now collapse versus consolidation, most of the time uh, in collapse the trachea will be deviated to that side that is very important finding and in the lobar fissure will be upward that is a finding seen in tuberculosis. When the lung volume is lost, the mediastinum or in the lobar fissures may pull towards that side. Now, we have discussed about one of the important area in emergency room that is antibiotic selection in emergency room. <coughs> it is not antibiotic, antimicrobial selection in emergency room. One drug that is levofloxin or moxifloxin covers almost all types of infection in the lung. Only problem in our country is this is a second line tuberculosis drug. So when we have strong suspicion about tuberculosis, better to avoid this drug for and go for an alternative drug because second line drugs if you are starting in a patient who is having suspicion of tuberculosis uh, without a combination that can produce resistance to phenolones. Thank you.